we all know Titanoboa for being the largest snake to have ever existed, and that has been uncontested, well, until recently, presenting the newest contender for world's largest snake, the Suki Indicus. This newly described species of snake was discovered in the Narandi Formation which resides in western India. The fossils representing a partial vertebral column were found in a ligurite bearing succession dating back to the early Middle Eocene period approximately 47 million years ago. So let's get into why most of you would be here, this being for the true size of this giant. The estimated body length of the Suki Indicus ranges from around 11 to 15 15 meters or 36 to 49 feet. The latter of its estimates surpass even the impressive size of the Titanoboa. For those of you that are a bit rusty and don't know the Titanoboa size off the top of your head, well its conservative estimates measure around 12 meters or 39 feet, while the maximum estimates seem to reach around 14 meters or 45 feet. The total body length of Vesuki Indicus was estimated using statistical models based on vertebral dimensions such as the width of the Postsygophysil and the Prosygophysil. Two separate estimation methods provide a total body length the ranges of approximately 10.9 meters to 12.2 meters and 14.5 meters to 15.2 meters. These calculations were made from the largest and best preserved vertebrae in the collection and demonstrated high reliability and statistical significance. Despite the body length estimates of Vesuki being greater than that of Titanoboa, there is the clashing argument that Vesuki's vertebrae were actually slightly smaller. It is noted that this discrepancy may be due to differences in the data sets used to predict these sizes. Different studies use different data from different sources including extant snakes, which may not directly correspond to the prehistoric Mastodoidae family which Vesuki belongs to. Despite these issues, the researchers involved don't disregard the results, still placing this newly discovered snake at around the same size if not larger than the previous king. But let's not get our hopes too high too soon. This is a newly described species after all, and due to it being relatively new, there is still plenty of room for change. Do you remember when Paracetus Colossus was originally described? It was thought to be massively larger than the blue whale. Look at it now. Though to be fair, I think this snake's remains have it a bit more reliably placed around the Titanoboa size. Now that we've gone through its size, it's time to discuss what other things we've learned from its fossil. This discovery not only sheds light on the prehistoric biodiversity of snakes, but also provides valuable insights into the ecological conditions of the time, which was characterized by a warm temperatures averaging around 28 degrees Celsius. Phylogenically, Vesuki forms a distinct clade from other snake species from India and North Africa, including Matsoya and Gigantopus. This suggests an intriguing evolutionary history and biogeographic connections between these regions. Interestingly enough, Vesuki is believed to represent a relic lineage that originated from India and subsequently dispersed to North Africa through southern Eurasia following the India-Asian collision around 50 million years ago. As for its anatomy, it is believed to have moved in a straight line or in a rectilinear pattern, suggested by its anatomically distinct vertebrae which are short from front to back and wide across. This movement style is typically slower and has been noted in some modern snakes, such as vipers. Due to its considerable size, it is likely that Vesuki was not an active hunter, but rather an ambush predator. Which, yeah, no surprise there. I don't see this predator doing too well in the 100 meter dash. Instead, it would have hunted similarly to how modern anacondas like the green anaconda or large pythons such as the reticulated python operated. And again, unsurprisingly, it speculated that it likely relied on constriction to capture and dispatch prey. What exactly this prey included is, well, a bit unknown for the moment, but it would most probably include your classic set of fish, small crocodiles, Dillions and mammals. The morphology of Vesuki's vertebrae, particularly the laterally directed synapophys, suggests a cylindrical body shape, which is typically associated with terrestrial rather than aquatic snakes. Unlike aquatic species, which often have laterally compressed vertebrae than ribs positioned beneath, Vesuki's anatomy indicates adaptations for a different lifestyle, possibly terrestrial or semi aquatic in nature. The absence of typical arboreal adaptations and the large size of Vesuki makes an arboreal lifestyle highly unlikely, which I don't think anyone's going to disagree with because who's going to argue that it'd be overly practical for a 14 meter snake to be living its life strictly around trees. This interpretation by the researchers aligns with the depositional environment where Vesuki's fossils were found, resembling the swamp marsh habitat preferred by modern large pythonids. While the possibility of an aquatic lifestyle cannot be entirely outruled, the evidence seems to lean towards a preference to a terrestrial or semi-aquatic lifestyle. So that's what we've learned so far about this new giant snake. And now we've reached the end of the video. As always, I hope you all enjoyed and thanks for taking time out of your day to check out my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well as comment down below any other video you'd like to see next. I'll catch you on the next video. See ya.